everybody welcome back to the another woodworking plan today we are going to be building these wooden jack-o-lantern boxes you build these boxes you stick t lights led lights inside of it they glow at night just like a carved out pumpkin and so we're going to be making those i'm going to be putting an alternate top on the top instead of this one that's common that i've been selling for a couple of years i'm going to be putting a top on it that is a solar panel um, light that comes on it dark you know off in the morning and will run eight or ten hours throughout the night recharge you don't have to stick you don't have to turn them on don't have to turn them off so we're going to be doing that we have the woodworking plans in case you would like to get those for a few bucks and um, have all the dimensions and all that stuff but let's make some wooden jack-o-lantern boxes Okay, here I am. I'm planing mine down. I use a cedar picket for this. You can use whatever you'd like. But I plane mine down just to make them smooth. A lot of people leave them unplaned, unsanded, where it's um, rough. You know, that's just up to you how you want to make yours. Either way, they are great. I just prefer planing mine down. It only takes one picket, and so I just do one board per jack-o-lantern box when i get it plain down to where i want it i'll measure it i got it at a half an inch that's about where i like it but the width doesn't really matter in these plans when you go to start cutting your pieces i square my end off and then i will cut on this i will show you cutting the top and the bottom and if you have the plans it'll show you the widths if you don't then you can make them whatever you want you know this is this is the way that you can make it your own. But I make mine the same top and bottom. And then I will cut the, the um, front piece, the face plate. And then I will cut another one the same size that I will rip in half in a minute. Now, when you, if you're going to make the T-light version where the, you want to leave the back shorter, the plans will show... You know, it's the same, but make it about 8 inches if you're making them 10 inches or tall or whatever. Just leave you a spot in the bottom to slide in the T-light where you don't have to remove the top. Here I am taking it. You can just rip it right down the middle, and that will be fine. I chose to make mine 2 and a half inches on each side, which makes the box part 3 and a half inches total with my dimensions. But you can put it right down the middle. It doesn't matter how wide it is. If it's the two and a half inches or two and two and um, five eighths or whatever it ends up being, you can just take and rip it right down the middle. I just chose to make them two and a half inches so the plans are easier to follow. I'm ripping the other side off to make them both two and a half inches. Now remember on these that little sliver, those make great stir sticks, so save them. You can make a stir stick out of that cedar piece and so those are equal so there's your six pieces two sides front and back and a top and bottom step one you just take and add a front piece i mean the back to a side and you want to make them square as possible when you're putting this together I would highly suggest using wood glue and if you're going to have them outside use the exterior wood glue to do it and so that way if it gets rained on it doesn't matter the glue will still hold because we're going to use wood glue on this and brad nails so just put your wood glue on spread it out making an even coat some people just slap it together. I like to spread it out for most projects. Then line them up. Get them pretty even. Best you can. It should give you a pretty close to a 90 degree angle. Whenever you have them pressed together. I put the brad nails in to hold it. And that way if you're just using wood glue and not brad nails. You would have to wait until it dries. This way you can keep going. I go ahead and clean off my 
squeeze out and you'll want to do that before it dries so it's less sanding the inside really doesn't matter because nobody will see it but I go ahead and clean it off now I went ahead and added two more brad nails to it but it only really needs three because these pickets are light so the second step of the assembly is just adding the other side it's a lot easier than adding the first one to the back because all you got to do is put your wood glue on there and then set it on top square it up it's already being held up it's not a hard process at all once you get to this stage at all so I clean up my squeeze out and the next step is to get your face cut out I use a CNC I know everybody doesn't have a CNC or want a CNC but I use a CNC so here I am finding my center you'll want to do that either way whether you're using a stencil or you're using a CNC machine you'll want to find your center that way you can take and cut it all out so I'll show you in a minute how I use a jigsaw but you'll will use a jigsaw more than likely to cut out that face then after you get through cutting it out sand around it a little bit you know to get it smooth in the cutouts then take and just add the face to the already the two sides in the back that you've already assembled Go ahead and make sure whenever you put it together that you pull all the pieces out to make them flush. That way it is a square. But as you'll see right here, it's a little bit off because my miter cuts were a little bit off. And so what I do is I just sand. I just take and sand it down until they are all four sides are good and flush. That means whenever you put the top and bottom on that it will not have a gap you don't want to have a gap but if the pieces are off you want it to be as good as you can go ahead and sand off any glue sand off and make it as smooth as you want if you're not if you're making it smooth if you're making it you know rustic you don't have to do this part but i do suggest rounding off the corners i think it just makes it a little bit more of a finished high-end product to round off those corners on these the next step is just to add the bottom i take and put it on there and i'll make them i'll get it centered up there pretty good you don't have to worry about whether it's perfect or not because you know it's a rustic jack-o-lantern piece but i will go ahead and make a couple marks I had to find another pencil but make a couple marks that way i know where to put it back down once i had the glue on this is the bottom so you put the glue on the bottom and spread it out then you can line it up with those marks press down and you can go ahead and flip it over because that glue holds it in the spot you need it add your brad nails do it add your brad nails while pressing pretty hard that way it keeps it together next step is adding the top now there's two tops that we're going to be showing the first one is the one i'm doing which is a new version that i'm making where i'm adding walkway you no know, sidewalk lights that you can buy cheap at a box store and um, normally you would just take and add that three by three square or whatever size square you want to make and put it on there i'm using the square to make a outline that i'm going to cut out with that jigsaw whenever you have a jigsaw you never you got to cut it from the center go ahead and make you a hole big enough drill you a hole big enough to get your jigsaw blade in and then just go around your line it's best if you add a hole to each corner where you don't have to do this what i'm doing now go around and around and around but i wanted you to see it how i'm doing it because that's how you'll be cutting out your faces put a hole in where you want your faces that your jigsaw can get into big enough for your jigsaw to get into and then cut out maneuver your jigsaw any way you got to to hit the 
lines that you have traced out in the, in the plans I'll explain a little more detail on how you get your pumpkin traced out or your pumpkin face traced out on the face um, probably best if you took and added you know clamp this down whenever you're doing it but that cedar is so thin or so lightweight that it's really easy to just hold it just as always be careful the hole was a little bit too big um there's some pieces on the inside of this cap what i did was i took some uh walkway lights i took the top off the globe part of the assembly you know without the stick that sticks in the ground and i just used the globe i mean the um the working solar panel and light part of it and there's some pieces on the inside that made it where i couldn't just take and put it um you know just cut it out for the hole and so i had to, but i did on the next ones i made the instead of making it a three by three square hole i made it smaller a little slightly smaller where it would i would have more room for the screws to go in but that's my assembled top there i'll go ahead and add that top in the um plans i said i was going to make a uh a pattern to go by to figure out where to put the holes in this thing but it's not needed it's um you basically just get it squared up on top it doesn't have to be perfect you stick it on there and um which i you know, I brad nail these down. I'm showing the brad nailing down because that's what you'll do with the regular top. But I'm going to come back in here in a minute and add the top that, um, add screws into the top instead of the nails. But anyway, this is what it looks like when I cut the lights off. It glows whenever it hits the light over there. When it sees the light that I have on, it turns off. And so that's how it's going to turn off and on for the, um, for the daytime and nighttime. It'll charge itself back up. Now here's the T-Light version. To make the stem of the T-Light, just cut off or cut a straight line on the top of your picket because your pickets already got your 45 degree angles and so all you got to do is cut that in two and you have two stems if you're going to make more than one here i am making a three by three square you make whatever size square you want if you're following the plans it'll be a three by three and then you just take and assemble it add a little glue add the nails I messed up when I added the nails and I didn't change my nail length and uh, had a hard time getting it off there and they stuck out the bottom and so be aware of that. I just cut them off a little bit and that way I would have something here in a minute as you see when I get it centered up. I put some glue on there then I just push it down and pushing those nails into it. When I shot this in place of course stuck to the bottom again because i had the wrong nails in there and these i just bent over normally on the next three that i made i used the right three quarter inch brad nails for finishing i used a semi-transparent pumpkin colored stain i like using a spray gun but you can do it with a paintbrush a foam brush whatever you'd like to use and I did all four of them before I wiped it off so it got a little heavy got a little thick I should have did two wipe them off two wipe them off and it so it got it was real is it, it was um darker than I wanted it to be but it turned out great you'll see the pictures at the end and so all you have is the finishing part here you just take and finish it wipe it you either you can wipe it on you can brush it on you can do whatever you want to do spray it on and then just wipe it off 
before it dries on these on this men wax it was it just stated you know put it on and wipe it back off pretty pretty quick mine took a couple minutes before I ever got to them to wipe them off so it was pretty thick but it worked out great I liked how they ended up I would suggest you know this is the this is an outdoor stain and so I didn't add a protector if you do not stain them you can spray it with a Thompson's water seal or something and um or you know some kind of sealer clear sealer that you want to use but outdoor it would look just as good going ahead and weathering weathering because this is cedar pickets if you use pine pickets you know they're treated so you don't have to do anything to those either if you don't want to but well, there's the finished looking product when you cut them off that's what they look like god here you have them see what they look like when you cut the lights off they look pretty cool i like them and i like that they will shine off and on as the as it gets dark i don't like that it shines out on the ground but you can set it up on something and i don't think you'd ever see it here's what the regular tea light ones look like unfinished and here's what they look like whenever they are flickering because those led tea lights will flicker just like a candle so here's what they look like Hope you enjoyed the video. Please like, subscribe, give me a follow, and we will be posting these up for sale, and I'll keep y'all updated. Here we go.